Hi, this is Lou, welcome to my channel. And this week's video is going to be all about seeds and berries and those little things that you find on the forest floor at this time of year. On my walks, I've been collecting acorns and different types of seeds and a few berries and some leaves and I've been uh, bringing them all back to use as artistic inspiration. So I've created this seed wreath project uh, that's the outlines all done in pen and then you just wash some messy watercolour in in lots of beautiful autumnal shades. So let's get started. So the project today is to paint a wreath and I'm going to use these little seeds and berries that I picked up in the woods as inspiration. I'm going to sketch them all and then uh, use some watercolour to give them some that lovely autumnal colour that they've got. Normally when I do line wash I use um, one of these pens, um, any kind of waterproof pen. Today I thought I'd mix it up a bit and I'm going to use some Indian ink and a dip pen. Uh, I like this kind of scratchy quality of the line and I want to do something today that's quite loose and messy and so this is going to give me uh, more of that quality. But if you don't have this and you just have a regular pen, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And then my colours today. You can see I've got quite a lot. And I'm going to put in the description box what each of these colours are that I'm using. But really the point is that I've just picked some random colours that I quite like and that I want to play with. Uh, so I've gone with a nice selection of autumnal browns. Uh, so I've got burnt umber, raw umber, and that one's Venetian red. I've got a couple of pinks here. So this one's neutral pink, it's potter's pink, and it's got some nice granulation. And then I've just got some magenta for a really bright pop. So that's a quinacridone magenta. And then I've got a couple of blues. So this one is called Luna Blue, but it's very similar to Indigo, um, a little bit lighter. And this one's Moon Glow, and it's more of a kind of purpley tone. And then I've got a bright yellow because I want to make like a limey green. And so I need a, a bright yellow in order to mix with one of these blues and that will give me a nice bright green. So let's move those out of the way. Uh, I'm working with just some plain watercolour paper today. Um, this is Arch, Archer's Arch paper. Um, and I've started buying this in big sheets so I can cut it down to whatever size I like. Um, but whatever watercolour paper you have, it's absolutely fine. And then I've got something to make a circle. Um, so I've got my compasses, but you could just draw around a plate if you want to. Um, and then I've got a pencil and I've got my trusty kneadable eraser. And then I've got the usual like glass of water and a paper towel for cleaning my brush. And today I'm just going to use one brush. Um, any kind of round pointed brush will be absolutely fine. Um, I'm going to be quite splashy with the paint. So if it's a big one, then, then that works just as well. And... I think that's about it for now. So if you uh, don't want to do the sketching part, then I've created some line work which you can download from my website. And I'll put a link up here to a video that shows you how you can transfer the line art onto your watercolour paper. So I'm going to work out roughly where the centre of this paper is because I'm using these compasses. And, and then you can just draw one circle if you want to, but I find that two circles gives you a really nice kind of space to fill. You're like drawing a donut. So I'll draw a little inner one and then I can draw like a nice outer one. There we go. Maybe even a bit bigger. So now the thing that I have to do is simply fill in all of this space. So I've got um, I've got various different things. I've got some slightly bigger things like these pine cones and the conkers. And then I've got smaller things like little berries. And then I've got little seeds like this. This is like a beech seed. I'm just going to try and fill this little donut with uh, shapes. So I've got my pencil to start with and I can even use the pine cone that I've got to give me a sense of like how big that's going to be, like that. And then I could do some smaller ones as well. So once I've got a sense of what one pine cone looks like, I could maybe do like a smaller one up here, maybe one here. They're kind of like egg shapes like that. And then the conkers, 
Maybe I'll have one here. Or maybe it'll go on the inside look like that. And then maybe another one there. And then I've got these little sprigs of berries. So let me put the berries in first. So one berry, two berry, three berries. And then some leaves here. And I'm just roughing these in just to get the positioning right. So I want some more of these little berries. Like that one's curving around there. That could be quite nice. Two, three, a berry, a berry, a berry, and then some nice like wavy leaves here. Maybe another one there. And then I've got these things, which I think are from a lime tree. And they're, they're like, they've got this funny little, it's actually, it's not like a leaf, it's like the seed casing. And then these little seeds and they're quite elegant. So I think I could maybe have like a selection of those coming down here. Maybe one, two, three there. And then that seed casing, how does that go? Something like that. And you can notice I'm putting all these things quite close together. And that's because I want to kind of hide them in amongst each other and make them look like they're kind of like on a forest floor and they're all intertangled and a bit messy. And they just happen to have formed into a perfect circle. So I've got this acorn. I want to get some acorns in here. Um, let's put one in here. So that acorn is going there and it looks a bit like a pill or something. And then it's got a little stick, a little stick, this bit coming off it there. That's quite pretty. And then it does have some nice leaves. Um, so I'm getting like a nice oak leaf in here, something like that. So I've got one acorn here. I think I need some others. So let's put one in here and let's have that one have that one looking like it's coming this way so you can see the top of it so so I can draw like a little circle and a bit like that and I'm going to carry on filling up the space with these uh, little shapes until I'm quite happy with the layout and then I'll go back in and refine them Okay, so I've got my space pretty much mapped out here. Now it's up to you how much detail you want to put in now, um, but I'm gonna go in with the pencil and just smooth some of these shapes out and I'm gonna put in some detail in my blobs, just so I know what they are. I did a little video the other day where I showed you how to go, go from like a quite detailed um, sketch of an object and observing it to then simplifying it, uh, which is the method that I use for things like this. So today I'm going to put in a little bit of detail on the pine cones and the conkers, and then I'm, I think I'm just going to work with the rest as it is. So my pine cones have these little squashed like rectangular shapes on them like this but I'm not going to talk you through it I'm going to speed up the video now and if you want to know kind of how I got how I went about that then I will link that other video for you So I've got my little bottle of India ink and I've got my dip pen and this hopefully is going to give me some nice loose sketchy marks and I'm holding it quite close to the end because I want to kind of give up some of my control. I want to, uh, normally I like to draw things that are quite tight and controlled but for this I think I want to do something quite loose and sketchy and uh, and I'm going to follow that through with the paint as well. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over my uh, pencil drawing and I'm going to put in a little bit more detail on some of the berries and the leaves and things like that than I've drawn in pencil. But essentially I'm kind of going over the outlines, uh, but I'm going to introduce a little bit of wobble, a little bit of jagged 
this a little bit of character to the lines as I'm drawing. I'm going to start here and I'm going to do these little berries and there we go, that looks good. Try and move my pen in a nice kind of fluid motion and maybe go over the lines a couple of times. I can go around these circles again. I can add in just some little bits. So I don't need to do one smooth line for it all. And then I'm gonna put in this lovely little curved seed casing there. Let's strengthen that shape a little bit, go over those lines a bit. There we go. So I hope you get the idea that you don't need to be careful with this. You can go over lines again. Let's do this little acorn. And that's a bit of an interesting sketchy line. Let's draw that little stem in there. All rounded bit. And then I'm gonna just put some little marks all over here. Give it that sense that the Acorn cap is textured, which it is. And then you can add a few little lines onto the acorn if you want to, but you don't have to do anything there. And then let's do these hawthorn berries. So the hawthorn berries have got like a nice like little wiggly bit at the bottom. I don't know if there's a more technical term for it than that. And some of them have got a little bit pointing out. And they're going to connect down here. And then the leaves, the leaves have got these like, like wiggly lobes on them. And I'm letting my pen be really scratchy and go backwards and forwards and add on those interesting lines. So put in some detail there and then let's do this one here and again a little jaggedness backwards and forwards and I've not got much control over the pen here. It's running out of ink there. So let's go in add some more and just a couple of little lines. There we go. So I've got something quite sketchy and scratchy. And then this thing here that I've tried to draw is a beech nut. Now I can even pull that onto my page and just sit it there and try and copy it pretty much as I see it. So I'm looking here at the beech nut and not not so much at what's actually on the page, what I'm actually drawing. I'm looking more at this rather than that. And then I'm going to put some little scratchy marks on it for all those little hairs on the seed casing. Let's get all of those in. There we go, like that. So let's do this nice oak leaf. And I'm making big lobes on it like that, a line down the center and then some lines off to the side. We don't need to put them all in and we can go over some of these lines a little bit more. Um, right now this pine cone, so I'm going to go and draw very roughly without taking my pen off the page until it needs refilling. Go. And I'm filling in these shapes. Thank you. 
and it doesn't even matter whether it looks too much like a pine cone. If you've got something in here with these kind of shapes in it, then your eye will fill in the detail and it will tell anybody who's looking at it, this is a pine cone. Something like that. Lots of nice loose scratchy squiggly lines in there. And I can add in even more in like the dark areas. So like in here you've got lots of kind of dark bits in between all of the little pieces. So I can just do some random scribbling and scratching in those dark areas and give myself a nice kind of dark centre to the pine cone. So I'm going to carry on around the circle and just go over my uh, pencil marks with some of this scratchy line work. I'm going to keep going and fill in the whole circle. So I'll speed up the video while I do that. When I'm sure this is all dry I'm going to go around and I'm going to take out the pencil and that will give me a sense of what it looks like overall. Now to add paint to this. Um, you can see here that I smudged it because I didn't listen to my own advice and I tried to rub away the pencil before it was all dry. But never mind, I'm going to cover this all with paint. I'm going to make it messy, it's going to be splodgy, the paint's going to run in different directions and that's what I want. I want I want this to be a real kind of like, I want every little area of this to look interesting and chaotic and loose and fabulous. So I've got a couple of pink colours, uh, pinky red colours, and I'm going to um, go over the hawthorn berries with them. And you can see that I'm being really loose with these colours. In fact, I could even be less precise than I am being and I'm just dabbing these on wherever those berries are. Now some of the some of these little round things are hawthorn berries and some of the other ones are the um, the lime seeds so those ones I want to do in like a yellowy green or maybe a browny green so I'm making sure that these ones here are the hawthorn berries and those are what I'm doing in this kind of lovely pinky colour and then there's a few other bits and I'm not sure what they are but we'll do them pink as well and these ones and a couple here whatever that is that can be pink that one that one Right, okay, I've got I've got some nice pink on there. And then I've got a couple of other like pinky or reddy colours. So I've got this one which is like a Venetian red. And I'm just gonna drop that into these while it's still wet. Not all of them. And some of them will be kind of taken over by this colour, and other ones you'll hardly see it at all. I'm just going to let that run and those colours mix. And I can do the same with, um, I've got this really bright magenta and just a couple of them 
can have a splash of magenta as well. Let all those colours do what they want to do. Obviously leaves, these leaves on the hawthorn are green, but they're on the plant they're more of a bluey green than than greeny green and they are starting to turn brown so there's that as well so there's all sorts going on there now I could mix up so I've got some blue here this is a lunar blue and I can mix that up into a green just by adding some yellow into it and that's going to give me a nice colour and I can splashily paint that on but I can also just take the blue straight from the pan splash some of that in, clean my brush, go to the yellow and then dab some of that in as well and that's going to give me a much more interesting look. So that I think is what I'm going to do here and I've also got this colour which I've got which is new this is moon glow and it's like a purple but I can add little bits of that into that as well and that's going to make that nice and dark. So there's some more of those leaves over here. Let's do have some of those in that nice purple and then I can add some of the yellow in and I'll get a more blue, kind of muted blue but it'll be a really interesting kind of set of colours. So that's what I'm doing with this. I'm dipping my brush into kind of different shades, letting them mix on the page. Sometimes I can just paint with water, so let's paint these ones here, just dab some water on them and then see what happens when I drop some colours in like that. So I'm going to do the oak leaves in a similar way, but I'm going to use this um, raw umber so it's a kind of, yellow oak is a very similar kind of colour, yellowy brown colour. And yeah, again, I can paint that all on. And then I can drop in some areas of other colour, that's some burnt umber. So I've got some nice browny bits. I can drop in some of that Venetian red and get a really nice vibrant red bit there. But I can also drop in any of those blue colours that I like and get and mute it and um, kind of take the intensity down. So I'm going to do that again and this one I'm going to paint with water. I'm just going to randomly drop some of those colours into it. And this is great fun. It doesn't take a lot of... Uh, I was going to say it doesn't take a lot of skill but it uh, it takes a lot of bravery just to throw some colours around. Let's do this one. Let's spread that out with some water. Uh, let's drop a bit of blue in there and a bit more of that like Venetian red up here I think. I love the way that that spreads out. So I'm doing the same thing again with these lime seeds. I'm just using that, um, what do you call it? The raw umber on those. Maybe drop a little bit of a brighter yellow in there. And then the seed casings here, um, mix the raw umber and the yellow on the palette and paint those in. Just a couple of swooshes, a bit more there and then I might take some of this green, mix a bit more blue into it if I need to and just drop a bit of that in just in a couple of spots as well. And then kind of similar colours for these little seed casings. They're kind of nice vibrant green for most of their length. And then they're a little kind of browner in the centre there. Maybe a little bit of uh, burnt umber in the middle. And I can add in some brighter 
bits of colour on the wings. A little darker again in the centre, like that. Um, what else? So I've got my acorns, and the acorn um, here is kind of a greeny brown colour, but um, yeah, I think I'm going to do them like a brighter green. Because I've got the um, I've got the conkers and I've got the pine cones, which are going to be quite dark brown. So I want them to stand out a little bit. I don't want everything to be brown. So if I paint these con um, the acorns in this kind of nice limey green, and again, just take a couple of dabs of another colour and swoosh them in there. Maybe a bit of that purple. And um, what else? So I've still got the conkers, I've still got the beech nuts and I've still got the pine cones to do. So the pine cones, I think I want to be like this nice um, burnt umber. But what I think I'll do is I think I'll paint them in in water. So I'm just going to paint the whole shape in in water and take some of that burnt umber and just dab it in a few places and let, allow it to spread around. Try not to control it too much. Something like that. So do the same with the other two. Splash some water on there. And then some nice dabs of colour. Maybe a bit more at the base. And a little bit at the top. And that I think is enough. So now my conkers, they're going to be this um, burnt umber, it's perfect colour. Let's put that on. So again, I can take some of that Venetian red, which I'm really enjoying, and use that to kind of warm up the brown like that. I'll give those a minute to settle and then I'll put the green of the seed casings in. While I'm doing that, let's have some yellowy brown or raw umber beech nuts. A little bit of dark on there, kind of on the inside. Just give it a bit of difference. So yeah, so I hope you get the idea that I'm really just doing some dabbing. Really loose brush strokes. And do those seed casings around the conkers now. Do them in mostly yellow and then drop a few little dots of the blue in there. And now I'm just looking around and seeing if there's anything I've missed. It becomes really quite obvious at this point if you've missed a berry or maybe you missed a leaf down here. Some leaves there as well. Oh, and that one. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this magenta, which is really, really bright. And I'm just going to do some more random dabs to make these stand out even more. And I can even do some dabs randomly in areas where I haven't painted. Let's do some of those and I can do that with other colours too. And I think I'm going to leave it there before I go overboard. 
So there is my lovely, scratchy, messy, colourful autumn wreath. I think I went a bit wild with the colours, but I love the way that they bleed and blend and the the different kind of textures and all the interesting marks that you get with this, with this technique. Um, so quite often I do things that are quite like tight and controlled and I like to like, you know, spend ages getting the edges absolutely right, but this is completely the opposite. So it's nice to do something like this as a bit of a, a bit of a change, a bit of a play. And I love some of the like the marks in here and the different textures and the and the different colours. So if you give this a go, I'd love to see it. If you want to post it on Instagram, you can do. You can tag me at Lou Rachel Davis and I love to check them out. And yeah, I um, look forward to seeing them. Uh, if you want to download the um, the line art that I did, you can uh, do that and you can find it on my website and there'll be a link for that down below. Um, and if you want to do a version of this that's slightly different, um, I'd love to see what colours you use. Um, if you want to do a version that's really kind of quite neat and precise, um, yeah, that would be a great like alternative to this. And uh, yeah, I, I hope that you enjoy this one. So I look forward to seeing you again in another video very, very soon. Bye bye.